Hello and welcome to another video from salesbird.com. In this video we shall be looking at Calipad 7 inch tablet. But first let's talk about Calipad. It's a new brand name being established by a well established manufacturer named Galaxy. So what does Galaxy do? Well, Galaxy manufactures graphics cards, specifically graphics card powered by Nvidia chip. So it's nothing surprising that Galaxy makes mobile devices because Nvidia makes chips for mobile devices. So let's look at what comes with the Galapad. The CPU is Nvidia Tegra 3 quad core processor clocked at about 1.4 GHz. It keeps changing depending on use. The RAM is 1 GB. There is 7 inch display. Internal memory is 8 GB or you can also get in 16 GB variation. Wireless LAN 802.11 BGN, Bluetooth, GPS, 2 megapixel front facing camera, battery is lithium ion with 3500 milliamp hour capacity, there's gyroscope, accelerometer, compass, proximity sensor, and of course the OS is Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. There's a micro SD slot that has max capacity of 32 gigabytes. There's micro HDMI port, micro USB for both data and charging, and of course there's the speaker, mic, and headphone port. The tablet comes in a nicely presented box as you can see. The only problem is that the way this box is designed, if you don't open it carefully, the tablet might just fall through. Out of the box, I had very good feelings about this. The first impression it made was very decent. The color theme goes with what's now and it's styled very contemporary. It sure feels very sturdy in hand. The build quality is uncompromised to good degree. Now this review unit that I've been given is the same unit that the distributor was using to demo and it has been used in daily basis by many people I'm assuming but on the unit there is little wear and tear. It has some signs of use but nothing to worry about. Point being that good looks alone won't cut it, it has to be durable and that it seems to be. Continuing with the external appearance, the width of the tablet is approximately 12 centimeters. The height of the tablet is approximately 20 centimeters and diagonally it measures at about 23 centimeters. And the height is just about 10 millimeters. Weighs about 334 grams. So turning it on, the first thing I see is nice and vibrant color of the IPS panel. The first application I'm launching is the camera just to show that it exists. It is good enough for video chat and so forth, but definitely not for photography. Continuing with the use, applications were launching quite easily. There were no lag. The games loaded quite nicely and it was running quite smoothly as well. One thing I realized at the time of editing this video is that in real life the picture quality looks much more vibrant. Over the camera, video and so forth it's not looking as clear but in reality it's much better than what it looks over the video. The 10 point capacitive touchscreen is nice and responsive. It does everything that I intended it to do. Um, the gestures and so forth it followed nicely and overall experience was quite decent. Next, the web browsing test. Here things get a bit more realistic. In real life we would be using this tablet to go to various websites and load more than one pages at the same time and do various things. So let's test it in a way that reflects that sort of usage. As far as browsing on a single page goes, that's pretty easily done and almost every device does it these days. Uh, nothing special about that. So let's put a little bit more pressure than that. While we are in the subject of usability, typing was quite easily done as well. The general accuracy was quite good and it was quite efficient to use the on-screen keyboard. 
So what I'm doing here now is that I'm launching many pages at the same time. Uh, the browser of course is Google Chrome and also while different pages are loading we will try and use these different websites that has already launched you know to search for products and things like that so each page is kept busy as other pages are loading hence more pressure on the CPU and in the middle of all these loading pages and so forth I took the liberty to go to YouTube and run a video as well I loaded quite a few number of pages one after the other now due to time constraints I can't show every second of what happened but what had happened is that generally one page after the other loaded just fine um, almost equal speed to what the internet speed was and near the end it started to become a little bit sluggish just a little bit I believe that would be because of the limited amount of RAM there's only one gigabyte of RAM and um, still quite impressive the number of pages it could swap in between like going from one page to other to other the response time was still pretty good it almost felt like I'm using a laptop due to inactivity some web pages may time out and if we go back to that web page the tablet was able to revive those pages quite rapidly and overall experience of browsing even at this amount of load was quite decent so this test demonstrates that this tablet has sufficient amount of resource to tackle good amount of pressure as far as web surfing is concerned. Impressive as it is, but if I'm allowed to say one thing, that would be if there was just a little bit more RAM, the CPU would have been able to keep up with it. 2 gigabytes, that's pretty common these days. Anyhow, I'm being picky. It's still doing very well with what it's got. Now with all this CPU power, one thing that comes along is heat and in some part of the back panel the temperature was seen to be over 40 degrees which can get a bit uncomfortable during summer. And now some benchmark. First Antutu version 3.2.1. The CPU score was 5813, GPU score was 4758 RAM score was 1961 IO score was 730 and the overall score was 13262 and with quadrant the CPU score was 11295 Memory score was 2644, IO score was 1474, 2D score was 1000, 3D score was 2357, with total overall score of 3754. And finally, Velamo, with HTML5 score of 1747 and metal score of 388. Now this score seems to be a bit high, even higher than Galaxy S3 HTC One X. So I repeated the test using a Google Nexus 4 which uses a Snapdragon S4 quad-core CPU and the score there was 1346. So the tablet is scoring quite high on Velomo. So what are my thoughts? The processor certainly is very powerful. The build quality is excellent. The battery did hold very nicely. I didn't charge throughout the test or while I was using at all. On the downside was that the screen resolution could have been a little bit higher. The color reproduction was fantastic, but pixels per inch count was quite low. I'm not saying that it was 
not good to use it actually was quite nice to use just that most other tablets these days are packing high resolution you know i couldn't find anything majorly wrong with this tablet yes there are it's and bits of this and that you know something i liked something i didn't but one thing that it doesn't have any 3g or 4g support which would have been great for a device that is on the go say how is someone going to use google map or google navigation they might have to borrow data from the mobile with Wi-Fi hotspot etc. Having said that and considering the fact that this device will have a RRP of about $240 or below this is a reasonable proposition. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Your comments and suggestions are most welcome. Please subscribe in order to stay updated with our latest videos. Bye for now.